So hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy and in today's video you're joining me for a very very big book haul of books that I have been hoarding over the past few months and there are over 20 books here so please do grab a warm beverage and cozy up and enjoy this video. So the last book haul I did was back in the autumn. I am so restrained guys. Well, not really because I've still been acquiring books since that video but I feel like I have been trying to like reduce the amount of books I'm buying obviously the nature of this channel the nature of my job working in publishing I do get a lot of books sent to me so I haven't really been able to stop that in a way I mean I could just say no but equally there's a lot of books that I want so without further ado we're just going to go through these 20 plus books that I have acquired since my last book haul in the autumn so as I said get comfy because this is going to be a long one the first book I really want to show you that I am so excited about is Dragonfall by L.R. Lamb. So this is a new fantasy book by L.R. Lamb who is a brilliant, brilliant fantasy author. L.R. Lamb has written a lot of other fantasy books including the pantomime books as well. So her first book was called Pantomime I believe and then she co-wrote a book with Elizabeth May called Seven Devils. So this is a traditional fantasy book obviously about dragons. This comes out on the 2nd of May and it's already one of my most anticipated books of the year. So let me just read you the excerpt on the back because I think this tells you everything you need to know about this book. So long ago humans betrayed dragons, stealing their magic and banishing them to a dying world. Centuries later their descendants worship dragons as gods but the gods remember and they do not forgive. So this combines a world where dragons obviously exist, they were hugely powerful and they have since been kind of forced out of society. So I'm hugely excited about this book. Anything to do with dragons is like my type of thing. I love a dragon book. So Dragonfall, as I said, is out in May. I'm already so hyped about this. And this was kindly sent to me from Hodder Books. So the next book is kind of a themed book because in May I'm actually going to Japan. Like I am so so excited about that trip but I really want to read more translated Japanese fiction. So I've decided to get Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi and how gorgeous is this book. I'm obsessed already. Um, this is already a huge book. I feel like a lot of people know about this. This is a Japanese bestseller and basically this is like a magical realism short novella I guess. So in a back alley in Tokyo there is this cafe which has been serving carefully brewed coffee for more than a hundred years. And basically when you drink the coffee, you get to time travel, but you have to make it back before the coffee gets cold. Hence the concept, hence the title. But what a cute kind of concept. And I'm already looking forward to going to a lot of the cafes in Japan. I just cannot wait for that trip in general, but I'm really trying to read Japanese fiction and translated fiction that will just transport me into that world, you know? So I'm very, very excited. I had to pick this up. I've heard a lot of things about this book and actually a load of people have read this and raved about it. I have seen this book everywhere. So do let me know if you've read this down in the comments below. The light is blinding and I cannot control it. So we're just gonna have to make do with the light. But anyway, the next book is my Waterstone special edition of Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. So you'll have seen this in my Hellbent reading vlog that I just posted. I will leave a link to that video. But Hellbent is the second book in the Ninth House series by Lee Bardugo. This is obviously the sequel to Ninth House, which was a book that I really enjoyed when I read it a few years ago. And I've already read this book. Let me just tell you, this book was incredible. It is very kind of like dark academia. It's set at Yale University. There's a lot of demonic goings on, very supernatural. If you've never read Ninth House or Hellbent, I really would recommend the both of them. Lee Bardugo is just such an incredible fantasy writer and she really has done something quite different in this book which I really really appreciate and fell in love with but yes this was a pre-order from Waterstones and guys just wait it is so so beautiful look at this beautiful hardback I'm obsessed with it so I had to get the special edition I'm a sucker for a special edition and this book was five stars of amazing demony goodness okay we have readjusted slightly i'm out of the sun 
But the next book is one that I picked up in the Waterstones half price hardback sale. And I really couldn't resist because I wanted to buy this book when it first came out. It is Elizabeth of York, The Last White Rose by Alison Weir. This is a historical fiction book all about Elizabeth of York, who is the mother of Henry VIII, wife to Henry VII, daughter of Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville. I could go on. I am obsessed with Plantagenet history. You may not know this about me, I am a big history nerd, what can I say? So this book is basically a fiction novel that tells Elizabeth of York's life. All of the very tumultuous events that happened during her reign. So I am super, super excited to read this. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a long, long time since it was released. So I was very relieved when it was in the Waterstones half price sale because I snapped this up so fast. Have I read this yet? No, but I will. Another book that I picked up in the Waterstones half price sale was Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. Now Ava Reed is the author of The Wolf and the Woodsman, which I've got on my shelf somewhere up there. I haven't yet read it, but I do intend to read it very, very soon. Juniper and Thorn, I've heard lots of really great things about, so I knew I needed to pick it up. So it's described as a young witch seeks to discover her identity and escape the domination of her abusive wizard father in this gothic retelling of the juniper tree. So I don't really know what the juniper tree is about, but I know that Ava Reed like writes a lot of mythology retellings. I think The Wolf and the Woodsman was a Jewish kind of retelling and I'm really intrigued by that. So I really wanted to read this book. It sounds very like rich in fantasy goodness and illusions and I love retelling. So I'm gonna be reading this pretty soon and I'll let you guys know my thoughts, but it's quite a short book and I thought, why not pick it up? It was half price. Now the next book I honestly just wanted because it looks really pretty and I'd heard really good things about it. This is The Poison Season by Maria Rutherford. And how gorgeous is this cover? Like I'm obsessed with the cover. Um, I kind of got gifted this from work because I work for HarperCollins and an imprint called Harper360 who publishes Harper US titles in the UK, if that makes sense. Basically we're like, what do you want? And I chose this book. So thank you to Harper360 for kindly gifting me this. So this is about like a mystical land where it's featuring this kind of very deadly forest and this very deadly lake and basically there is an outsider who comes into her world and our main character Lilo ends up kind of betraying her family, her lifestyle, her community for this outsider. So it sounds super intriguing and quite an unusual concept. This is YA I believe so I'm intrigued to kind of read it and see what the hype is about because I have heard some really good reviews of this book and I'm really keen to see if I will like this too. I just am going through a bit of a fantasy kick at the minute. What can I say? Like, when am I not really? But anything that's like a lush, very rich fantasy story is like my type of thing at the minute. The next book was kindly gifted to me from Pan Macmillan, and this is The Greatest Self-Help Book is the One Written by You, The Daily Journal by Vex King and Kaushal. So, Vex King is like one of the kind of leading authors in the kind of self-improvement space at the minute and I am like aware of their like kind of work but this is a journal believe it or not as it says on the tin but I love a journal like I am all about that self-improvement life and answering questions and kind of getting introspective like that is my thing to a T so when Pam McMillan said, you know, we have this journal, would you like to kind of look at it, review it? I was like, yes, sign me up. So I think I'm really looking forward to just having a very slow Sunday and working my way through this book because I love journaling. And as I said, like I'm really trying to get into that more kind of spiritual self-improvement type of books this year. And this one as a journal seems perfect for that. So thanks to Pam McMillan for kindly gifting me that book. And then Pam McMillan also gifted me Rainbow Rowell's Scattered Showers. So this is a short story collection by Rainbow Rowell who obviously is the author of Eleanor and Park, Landline, lots of like brilliant romances like that. And Rainbow Rowell short stories in particular, I absolutely love. I already have one of her short story collections on my shelf somewhere. It's called Almost Midnight, I think. 
and I read that every Christmas. Like it's a very festive collection. But this I think includes those short stories that were in that special edition collection, but also extra short stories. So I'm really keen to just have an afternoon reading this. I think I will be able to read it pretty soon. But I'm obsessed with this cover. Look how beautiful that is. Like, oh my God, in love. So thank you to Pam McMillan for kindly gifting me this book. I am obsessed with the look of this. I think it's stunning. The next book was actually a Christmas present from my boyfriend. And as I mentioned, we are going to Japan in May. So he got me Ikigai, which is the Japanese secret to a long and happy life, which I kind of love. I love these like dinky type of books that tell you about a concept that is from another culture, you know, like I love that so much. So this is kind of like a lifestyle guide, I guess, all about this Japanese concept. And it's all about like finding your purpose and like following your passions and doing what you love, which I think is a great message. And I will be reading this before I go on my trip to Japan. So I've got a big reading list for that trip, it must be said. Okay, moving swiftly on because we've got a lot of books, as I said, 20 plus. So the next book was kindly gifted to me from Harper Fiction. As I said, I work for HarperCollins, but sometimes I get books from other parts of the company. And this is God Killer by Hannah Kainer. So this is already published and I have not read this yet and I will read this very soon. But oh my God, does this sound incredible. Like this book is getting rave reviews. It was a Sunday Times bestseller. So I'm so, so, so excited about this. So it's described as the epic first book in the God Killer trilogy by debut author Hannah Kainer. Kissen's family were killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is, until she finds a god she cannot kill. Skeddy, a god of white lies, somehow bound himself to a young noble, and they are both on the run from unknown assassins. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blenradden, where the last of the wild gods reside, to each beg a favour. Pursued by demons and in the midst of a burgeoning civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom and only they can be the ones to stop it. This sounds incredible, like I'm so, so pumped for this. As I said, I'm on a bit of a fantasy kick at the minute, when am I not? But this book is top of my list, let's just say that. And then some more books that I picked up from work. So before Christmas, we had a bit of an office clear out and not gonna lie, working in a publishing house has its perks when you're doing an office clear out. So I picked up three novels, which are all from Harper Fiction, Harper Voyager, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. The first book is The Hedge Witch by Carrie Thomas. So Carrie Thomas is the author of Threadneedle, I believe, and this is a short story collection from her. So I've never read Threadneedle, but the cover of this just sent me like, in a spin and I was like, I need to pick this up. So this is a kind of prequel to the events of that book. So I was thinking maybe reading this because it is a novella, very, very short, and then reading Threadneedle and seeing what I think of that book as well. So I picked that one up and then I also picked up The Witch and the Tsar by Alessia Salnikova Gilmore. So this I believe is a Russian folklore retelling, which you know I love, I love a retelling. So this book is set in 16th century Russia and upends the stories we know of Baba Yaga, who is the witch of Slavic fairy tales and the stuff of nightmares. For beyond the rumours of her iron nose, fangs for teeth and house on chicken legs is the story of a woman so wise and strong that she has to be cloaked in lies to hide her true power. So this is, yeah, a retelling of Baba Yaga, which as you know, like it's kind of retold in a lot of different stories, but I'm really intrigued by this book and just to immerse myself in Russian mythology and retellings, which I love for this time of year. And finally, from that little haul, I picked up The Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfield. So this is a historical fantasy novel, which is one of my favorite genres ever. First off, the cover, like, wow, in love. And this is set in 1768, and it's described as brimming with romance, betrayal, and enchantment, the embroidered book reveals and reimagines a dazzling period of history as you've never seen it before. So this is set at Versailles and features magic, which tell me no more, I'm already hooked and excited about. I adore any book set at Versailles or during that kind of like 18th century France, like 
give that to me that sounds incredible so i picked those three books up from work and i'm really happy with my haul okay so the next book was kindly sent to me from bloomsbury books and it is the ya debut from lex croucher who i adore lex's novels are so utterly brilliant and they've written books like reputation infamous and trouble is coming out this year as well and they are all kind of regency rom-coms essentially but Gwen and Art are not in love is a YA debut about Guinevere and Arthur and the kind of retelling of that story but it is a queer retelling and Gwen and Art are forced to marry but they are each in love with someone different so Gwen is in love with a woman and Art with a man and this just sounds like a riotous good time. Like this sounds like so much fun. How gorgeous is this proof as well? So this heart was a scratch off heart on the proof. Already in love with that, so, so clever. And this is publishing in May. So huge thanks to Bloomsbury for kindly sending me this one. I cannot wait to read this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I also was kindly gifted a copy of the new Becky L. Batali novel, which is called Imogen, obviously, and they wrote my name on the proof which is really cute so it says lucy obviously love and i am really really excited about this book so this book is kind of inspired by becky albertalli's own story in terms of coming out so this is about imogen who is straight and is an ally to the queer community she goes along with all of her friends who are queer to like different events and parties and really embraces queer culture but then she has herself asking like maybe she's also a part of that community and maybe she's missing out her own sexuality so i am so excited about this book i think it's a hugely important one about really discovering yourself and finding your true identity so i'm really intrigued by that as well i don't really read a lot of ya contemporary at the minute but i will read a becky albertalli novel like you don't have to tell me twice i love becky's novels and this sounds so so good this is publishing on the 11th of may so i popped into the works which is kind of a discount kind of like bargain bookstore in the uk they have so many book talk books guys like it's just book talk in there so if you're from the uk go along to your nearest works because it's just book talk it's amazing and they're all so cheap so i picked up two books the other week i picked up the wisteria society of lady scoundrels by india halton this is described as bridgerton meets peaky blinders and it is a victorian historical romance so it's all about this kind of group of women who pickpocket and blackmail their way around the country and they're trained in the art of deception but then her next hit is a trained assassin called ned and they stumble upon each other and obviously end up falling in love so this has been on my tbr for ages so i was really happy when i saw this in the works because i was like oh my god it's like three pound i'm gonna pick this up asap so i got this one and then I also got King of Wrath by Anna Huang. So Anna Huang wrote Twisted Love, like that series, which I actually haven't read yet. I have heard a lot of great things about that series, have not read it, mainly because it's like contemporary romance and I'm just not that big on contemporary romance, but this is contemporary romance. But it is a marriage of convenience or a forced marriage i think which i adore that trope like give me an arranged or forced marriage any day that's one of my favorite romance tropes so this is all about that and it is about a billionaire ceo who has to marry a jewelry heiress who is his enemy so i am so so down for this i've heard it's quite spicy and if it's on book talk of course it kind of has to be because they love the spice on book talk but i'm super excited about this i've heard incredible things okay we are almost at the end of this so i recently got sent from pam mcmillan two proofs which i cannot be more excited for the first one is one of my most anticipated books of the year it is one for my enemy by olivie blake and i've recently gotten into olivie blake's writing i read the atlas six before christmas and i'm already hooked so when i heard that olivie blake was coming out with a new novel and that pam mcmillan were publishing it and they offered me a proof i could not say no this is publishing on the 6th of april described as a captivating fantasy story of ambition sacrifice and the enduring power of family legacies so it's about two rival families and i think two people fall in love with the other so it's kind of 
of like a Romeo and Juliet style situation here, but I'm already hooked. I'm already excited. Give it to me now. Olivia Blake writes the most beautiful stories, so I'm really, really excited for this book coming out in April. And Pam McMillan also sent me Scarlet by Genevieve Cogman. So this is a so this is a gorgeous proof and it's set in revolutionary France. Again, I'm obsessed with like reading like French fantasy novels at the minute, like set in revolutionary France or just before the revolution. And excitingly enough, it is a thrilling reinvention of the tale of the Scarlet Pimpernel, which I really love that story, with the addition of magic and even more mayhem. So I'm already on board with this. This sounds incredible. This is publishing in May as well, and I cannot wait to read this book. Then I made another Waterstones trip at the start of the year. I could just can't keep myself away, evidently. And I picked up two books, so quite restrained. I picked up The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen, which you eagle-eyed viewers will know I've already read this, and yes, I have, but I don't own a physical copy. And when I saw like this edition with this beautiful artwork, I was like, it's a no-brainer. I need this for my collection. This is one of my favourite fantasy romance series ever. Just one of my favourite fantasy series, full stop. So recommend The Bridge Kingdom to you all. It is incredible, please read it. You will not regret it, but I had to pick up a physical copy. And finally, I also picked up Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I've seen this all over booktube. I had to get it, like, what can I say? This is a Peter Pan retelling about Hook and Wendy, I think? And it's a very dark romance. So I'm getting into my dark romances and I cannot wait to read this. I think it is set in like a contemporary world so it's not fantasy but i'm still on board with this and i'm keen to read it and see what the hype is about and the final two books are two books that i picked up recently i ordered them just the other day because i had to have them and one of them is one of my most anticipated books of the year so that is the stolen air by holly black i saw this and i was like I haven't got this yet and I need to read it. This is of course the kind of spin-off book of the Cruel Print series, The Folk of the Air by Holly Black. And this features Jude's brother called Oak and his own romance basically. It kind of follows his own romance. I've actually heard loads of good stuff about this so I can't wait to just go back into that world. Like I can't wait to enter the world of the Folk of the Air again and just read about Oak story. So I had to pick this up, but I bought this very recently. And then in the same order, I also picked up Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the final book in the Last Hour series, which is a Shadowhunters series. This is set in Edwardian, I think, England and is about the kids of the characters in the Infernal Devices series. So they're all interconnected. I think this is also the last ever Shadowhunters book that Cassandra Clare will write. I might be wrong about that, can someone clarify? But I'm pretty sure The Last Hours is like the final Shadowhunter series that she's doing. I might be wrong, but I haven't even read book one of this series, Chain of Gold. And I still needed to pick this up because I didn't want to leave it too long and risk these gorgeous special editions being sold out because this has like gorgeous artwork in it. And what can I say? I'm a sucker for a special edition, but I had to get this book because I thought, you know, I'm going to read the series one day and I may as well have the completed collection. So I've got that now and it's all good. So guys, that was a very long video. Thank you for bearing with me. Those are the books that I picked up over the last few months. I really hope you've spotted some books that maybe you hadn't heard before or maybe you're desperate to read too. Let me know if you have read any of the books I mentioned in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on these books. Thank you again so much for watching. I will speak to you very, very soon in my next video. Bye.